begin this service by acknowledging that we are on indigenous land covered by Treaty 18. For thousands of years, um, indigenous peoples have cared for, built communities, and used this land. We specifically thank um, the Patoon, Anishinaabe, and the Wendat, the most recent stewards of this place. This acknowledgement reminds us of our legal obligations to indigenous peoples and our responsibilities to care for the lands. The lighting the Christ candle. No matter what kind of believers we may be, let us all feel comfortable. Let us all feel comfortable here at church and among our church members. There is a place for each of us here. Now we center our hearts for worship as we pause and the glow of the Christ candle flickers. Let us also remember all that happened during Holy Week. Let us remember that Christ has died. Let us remember that Christ has risen again. Hallelujah. Good morning. Today is March 31st, 2024. Welcome to St. John's United Church. And welcome those who worship with us together in person or online. Um, do we have fellowship after this gathering? Yes? Okay. The fellowship will be held in Shilton Hall right after this gathering. And we have one announcement this morning. Nancy Mann, please. Good morning. Is this working? Oh, it is working, yes. Good morning. Many of you know me. I've been a member of St. John's for 41 years. And Jerry Mann and I and our two young children came here, and we were welcomed as the first young couple in a long time. And as I said, we weren't that young at that time. But anyway, um, I have some news from our family again. Uh, those two young boys grew up, and if you can imagine, also took on the same occupation. Both of my sons are certified arborists, which means they are tree experts. But in our family, we don't use the word expert. We use the word spurt. You're a spurt. So many of you would remember in 2010, our youngest son, Cameron Mann, suffered a fall from a tree, a tree job he was doing in North Vancouver because he's our Western boy, and suffered a critical head injury and brain damage. Um, but he recovered. In fact, it took him 10 years, but he made a full recovery and recovered his life financially, occupationally, personally, and did it. And did it with prayer. And those prayers started here. Last Saturday, our son Cam suffered another fall. And trees break. So in his occupation, it was nothing that he did wrong the tree broke and acted like a slingshot, and that's the fall. So in 2010, he fell 30 feet. Saturday, he fell 40 feet. And the message that I had on my phone when I got home on Saturday night was that he had been airlifted to Vancouver General. So I have faith. And in that faith, I thought, well, it will be the next 24 hours, and we'll know. By Sunday morning, they had ascertained, they admitted him thinking it was a broken back. By Sunday morning, they had ascertained that it was not a broken back. Instead, three compressed vertebrae, nine broken ribs, 
we have 11, and a concussion. Very serious injuries again. Again, my faith and my faith in the healthcare system, because we know it well out in BC as well as Ontario, drives me to be relaxed and calm because we need the professionals to do their job. The trauma team that admitted him cannot believe his recovery and are so impressed that one week later, we have a very comfortable boy. He's on a morphine drip, but morphine's a good drug and we need that now. And the system. But I am here today to ask for your prayers again. Because it works. You prayed for me when I lost my job so unexpectedly at Stevenson, and it worked. You prayed for me when my house burned. Cam says I sound like a country and western song. <laughs> He's our family, we call him the family comedian. I have lived a wonderful life, and I have been loved and supported. And a lot of that has come from here. So that's my little announcement for today. And if you can find it in your hearts to pray, it's appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Lancy, for sharing your story with us this morning, on this Easter morning. Definitely you, your son, and your family in our prayer. Before you turn to one another to greet the peace of Christ, this morning I invite you to, to say Happy Easter with loud voice, please.
Please join me, call to worship. Christ is risen. What a glorious day. Christ is risen Our lives are forever changed. Stop and experience the beauty. Christ is risen. Prayer responsibly also. We gather this holiest of days, living God, to remember one moment in time that changed everything. Thousands of years ago, your spirit burst out of the grave and placed into our hands the promise of resurrection. Today we rejoice, even though we so often forget. Today we remember. We remember remember that in you and because of you, we are not alone. Amen. Our opening hymn from Voices United, hymn number 155, Jesus Christ is risen.
Please be seated. And recognition of new members this morning, our scripture reading is selected from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 12 to 13. For just as the body is one, has many members, and all the members of the body, though many, are one body, so it is with Christ. For in the one spirit, we were all baptized into one body, Jews or Greeks, slaves or free, and we are all made to drink of one spirit. Amen. The church is a community of people with varied gifts, united by the Holy Spirit. We gather to celebrate God's presence, to discern God's truth, and to follow the way of Christ. By our baptism, we are made members of Christ's church. To experience this membership in the denomination to which we belong, which for us is the United Church of Canada, and within the context of a local church community of faith called St. John's United Church. We are now to welcome into this congregation one who is already those who are already members of the Church of Jesus Christ. On behalf of the St. John's United Church Allison Congregation, I present the following persons whom we welcome into the membership of our community of faith. Merrill Edward and Marilyn Helco. Edward and Mary are both transferring from Thornhill United Church. Heather Stewart. Heather is transferring from Tottenham United Church. And William and Rhonda Cran. Bill and Rhonda are transferring from St. John, St. Andrew's Presbyterian Church in Kitchener, Waterloo, and we have had the benefit of their combined voices in the choir of our services. No, just facing people, a little stand, two step behind. Can you two step behind, so, yeah. Yes, a little bit. I know you live together, so. Okay, I have just one big question to all of you. William Crane, Rhonda Crane, Edward Helco, Marilyn Helco, and Heather Stewart. Will you join with us as together we celebrate God's presence, live with respect in creation, love and serve others, seek justice, and resist evils? I'm going to invite the congregation to stand and show your commitment with these people. Dear friends in Christ, let us pledge to these persons our support and care. Remaining standing, join me in a new creed. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and has created, who has come in Jesus, the world made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, 
our church, and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Congregation may be seated. Welcome in the name of Jesus Christ. We welcome you to the privilege and responsibilities of membership in this congregation. We give thanks to God for your witness among us. Let us bow our heads in prayer. Gracious God, giver of life, you have called us by name and pledged to each of us your faithful love. We pray today for your blessing on William, Rhonda, Heather, Edward, and Merlin. Watch over them and guide them as they continue to grow in faith. Remind us of the promises of our own baptism and renew our trust in you. Strengthen us to do your will and to serve you with joy through the power of the Holy Spirit. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Ken. So before you go back to your seats, is there anyone to say any words to people? <laughs> Just final opportunity. I'll say something. Oh, you can use the microphone. I don't need the microphone. Oh. <laughs> I think they know I don't need the microphone. Nevertheless, Rhonda and I have been, because of moving for jobs and so forth, we've been at a number of different churches. And quite honestly, after the first church we belonged to for many years, which, which was really where we felt like there was family and that we were very much a part of. After that, because of a change in my job, we went to a couple of other places in different cities. And although we were, we were made welcome, we never really felt connected to the place. Rhonda and I have only been here for three and a half years. And we, weren't, we didn't come to St. John's in the beginning because it was right in the middle of the worst part of COVID. <laughs> And it was a terrible time to move because we were coming from a place that was a very metropolitan kind of place to a small town. And we were kind of nervous about that. And then because of COVID, we moved into a neighborhood. We couldn't even go across the street and shake hands with our new neighbors, nor could we join anything, really. Um, finally, the next year, we came here. And I have to say, and I think Rhonda would, would fully support what I'm saying here, is that in the very first week we were here, we never felt so welcome. And in the very first month, we felt like we were home. So thank you. Thank you. So you spoke on behalf of the, the other four, right? <laughs> Would you, yeah, please. Heather? I, I would just like to reiterate what both these people have said. The first Sunday that I came, there were people that I'd never met before who came and greeted me and said, come and join us for fellowship. And it's been like that since the moment I entered the church. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> While we are going to sing Voices United 331, the church is one foundation, Voices 1 and 2, these people are going back to their places.
I'm reading today from Acts chapter 10, 34 to 43. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every people, anyone who fears him and practices righteousness is acceptable to him. You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is the Lord of all. That message sped, spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee after the baptism that John announced, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power, how he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree, but God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name, the word of Christ. And I think we're singing Psalm 118, Voices United, 837. Join me in responsibly reading part one. We have four parts in this section, and after each one we sing that hallelujah, I believe. Let Israel now say, Let the house of Aaron say, Let those who fear God say, God is my strength and my song. God has become my salvation. The right hand of God does mighty things. The right hand of God raises up. I shall not die but live, and I shall proclaim what God has done. Open to me the gates of the temple, that I may enter and give thanks to God. I thank you, for you have answered me. You have become my salvation. This is God's doing, marvelous in our eyes. Save us, O God, we pray. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of God. God, our God, has given us light. You are my God, and I will thank you. And then reading from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, 
1 through 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early in the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in white, a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead for you, of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The word of the Lord.
Let him Easter in us. Let him Easter in us. That is one of the last lines. Line 277 in the poem, The Wreck of the Dutch Land. By Gerald Manley Hopkins, an English Jesuit priest who lived in the 19th century. Hopkins is writing about a steamship named the Dutch Land that ran aground about 25 miles off the English coast. His poem is dedicated to five Franciscan nuns who were fleeing persecution in Germany and died in that shipwreck. Toward the end of the poem, Hawkins speaks of his hope that Christ will enter our lives. Let him Easter in us and be a day spring to the dimness of us. Hopkins understands and uses Easter as a verb rather than as a noun. It is a reminder that Easter is something that happens to us. at present world and at present time. Easter is therefore about action, about living, and about transformation. Christ enters, Christ Easter's in us. Jesus shares his reason experience, his risen life within us. I wondered why the date of Easter was not fixed, but keep moving around each year. Today, March, 29, March 31st, it's Easter Sunday, right? Does anyone remember Easter 2023? It was April 7th. What about Easter 2022? It was April 17th. What about Easter next year, 2025? It will be April 20th. Yes. Easter should be in between March 22nd and April 25th. Why? Because the Nicene Church Council decreed that in 325, AD, that church should be observed, should observe, the Easter should be observed on the first Sunday following the first full moon after the spring equinox. So the spring equinox is always March 21st. So always March 21st. So what was the first full moon after spring equinox this year? Last week. Last week, exact? Roughly. Roughly. It was Monday, March 25th. (laughs) So Sunday, this is the Sunday, right after the first Sunday, right after the full moon. That's the calculation of Easter all the time since 325. Mm -hmm. 
You know, any other historical event, we celebrate a certain fixed date, like Remembrance Day. What is it? November. Oh, we all know that. <laughs> what about St. Patrick's Day? You are smart. But what about, again, Easter 2025? <laughs> April 20th. So why Easter never set in stone? The Holy Church Fathers, spiritual readers, know that Easter should not be a noun but a verb. The date of resurrection, the date of renewal, the date of rebirth of each individual differs in, in each one's life. St. Paul says, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ who lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith in the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me in Galatians chapter 2, verses 19 to 20. The date, the date, that's the date. The date that I, not I, but Christ lives in me. That's the date of your Easter. Christ Eastering within me therefore means we have a new center, new core from which we live. We now live Christ life. So Easter is more than a day, more than an, an event, more than a remembrance. Easter is a way of life. So what would it mean for your life if you knew Easter as a verb, not as a noun? We have a very good example in the Gospel reading this morning. Three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome. They had brought and they had bought and brought spices to anoint the body of Jesus on Easter Sunday morning. Two verbs, bought and brought, are used for the preparation for Easter. The stone has been rolled away from the tomb so that the women have easy access to Jesus' final resting place. By the way, we have tomb over there. Can you notice it? <laughs> the stone has not been rolled away. Andy, please come and roll away, please. Again, two verbs. Thank you, Andy. Two verbs rolled away and entered are used to close the Easter moment. And I, I draw your attention to the last part of Easter in the Gospel of Mark, chapter 16, verse 8. So they went out. So we didn't know, we didn't hear what's going on inside, but they went out and fled from the tomb. And amazement has seized them, and they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Check out all the verbs in this reading. When out, fled from, seized, said nothing, and were afraid. They seem to draw back to their old thinking and mind. 
hearing the good news of Easter, that life goes on after death, which the mighty power of God was not what they expected. They were seized and had nothing to say to anyone. And that's the ending part of the Gospel of Mark. According to biblical scholars, verses uh, 9 to 16 are additional by later people. If they had stopped moving forward, with their experience of Easter, we would not be here this morning. Many women in the Bible had met Jesus, were cured and healed by Jesus, but none of their names were remembered and recorded in the Bible except these three women, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome because they move forward with their experience of Easter. They made their Easter noun to Easter verb. What's the message of Easter as a verb in today's reading of Acts? One of Jesus' disciples Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality. Before the Easter experience, Peter thought God had partiality for the Israel alone. But after the Easter experience, he changed his mind, his belief, and he proclaimed, there is no partiality in God's love. St. Paul proclaimed the same message. In Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentiles. There is neither male nor, nor female. There is neither free nor slaves. All are one. All are equal in Christ. Before Easter experience, we all know he tried to persecute. He tried to arrest and kill the Christians. But after Easter experience, he just completely changed. We are gathered here this morning to celebrate Easter, not only as a noun, but also as a verb in our daily lives. That's the reason we continue to gather together to learn from each other and to share the goodness of Christ in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen and amen. Our next hymn from Voices United 161, Welcome, Happy Morning.
Please be seated. As we are blessed by the God of wonder and love, let us share the gifts we have received in blessing to others. So let us commit ourselves to acts of love as we continue to worship God through the presentation of our offering. I invite you now to enjoy the music as you consider how you present your offering to God, for the people of God. Join me offer to prayer in unison. Eternal God, we offer our gifts, reaching out from the familiarity of our community to the unknown aspects of life and living. May the Spirit encourage our sharing and our serving. Bless these gifts, O God, in Christ's name. Amen. Please be seated. Closing him should be this one. Voices United 173, Thine is the glory.
permissioning. Go with joy. Go with enthusiasm. Go with friends. Above all, go with love. Go with joy, go with enthusiasm, go with friends, go with love. Thank、you